everybody, people with disabilities is much less present. Austria is a small country, uh, so networking works quite well. And a few years ago, the network for repository managers did an Austria-wide survey of repositories and also asked about accessibility. And the result was, was disappointing. The Association of Austrian Librarians has a working group on the topic of digital accessibility in libraries in which Andreas uh, Jaitler, who is the disability officer at the University of Klagenfurt, is also involved. Together, we have already issued guidelines for the creation of accessible content. And today, we will talk about tools and accessibilities. And I would like to say thank you very much, Andreas. The floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, this was the introduction. Okay, um, yeah, um, then I think we will uh, start. Uh, yes, when Susanne asked me to uh, talk about accessibility at uh, at the at this uh, format, um, I thought about hmm. I talk about accessibility all the time. What would be uh, a nice uh, yeah topic to to talk about and then I thought on um, what makes me most frustrated when I'm um, doing accessibility work when I'm creating documents and so on oh I forgot to share my slides so sorry I will start this now start the presentation first and then I will share it So, okay, so, okay, you should see my presentation now. Yes. And yeah, this is another accessibility feature that I don't know uh, if everyone knows that exists. Um, this is just a built-in feature in PowerPoint where you get live transcriptions of uh, your presentation or captions, if you can call it. Uh, this is a nice feature um, that uh, are built in yeah, several Microsoft um, yeah, applications nowadays. Uh, you need Office 365 to use it because it uses uh, cloud services. But um, if you are yeah, talking not that uh yeah with a dialect then it should understand you quite well and i hope uh it understands me as as, as i read my text when i'm speaking it uh looks like it it works works quite well yeah even if i'm stuttering a bit uh it um yeah we does my phrases and um yeah i, I like this feature and i turned it on to show it today um this is one of the uh yeah cool ways how tools can uh, support accessibility so uh today's topic is it's all about the tools so then let's go to the next slide so today when we are talking about accessibility we have guidelines that tell us how to create accessible content. Um, we have standards, um, for example, also the guidelines, for example, everyone knows the RACAC, the web accessibility uh, yeah, guidelines and uh, web content accessibility guidelines. And uh, yeah, these tell us how we may create uh accessible content or better how the content should look like to be accessible the i, I will come to the problems later um yeah and we have standards for example we have in in the P, in pdf we have pdf ua nowadays that stands for universal accessibility uh and it would be nice if 
we write an office document, a web document, and want to publish it at, as an, a PDF file, then it would be really nice that this file would be a PDF UA compliant. Um, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to talk uh, about uh, this topic today, because that's not that easy to achieve. Yeah, and we have laws, at least in, uh, in Europe and in the USA uh, and in the in UK uh, that, uh, yeah, rely on these standards and guidelines uh, and yeah, public services in, in most cases should uh, produce documents that are conformant to these guidelines and standards. But yeah, nevertheless, many of the documents we find on the web are still uh, not accessible. So we can ask us the question, why is this the case still? So from the practice, we from practical work, uh, I observed um, some, yeah, some reasons why this may be the case. One of the reasons may be guidelines and instructions are not uh, read or understood quite well. Yeah, um, the web content accessibility guidelines in the latest version has about, I guess, uh, I guess uh, 78 checkpoints uh, to apply to. Um, scientists from other fields, for example, if you are yeah, uh, uh, from physics or medicine, they don't have the time and the nerve to uh, read and understand accessibility guidelines that have uh, tens to hundreds of checkpoints that they have to apply to. Uh, this is something that will never happen, that people uh, read uh, or understand quite well. So uh, in the current state, uh, we have the guidelines, but yeah, imagine there are guidelines, but no one reads them. Um, in most cases, the guidelines are not the right media to transport how accessibility works. Uh, often it would be easier to have a short, uh, yeah, a, a movie, a, a training video about, for example, how, uh, why you should not, um, why you should use alternative text in your documents. So for pictures, uh, for animations and so on, why there should be alternative text. No, uh, if, if you are not involved in accessibility, maybe you do not understand why, because well, no, no one told you. And if you are not reading the guidelines, you get they, uh, you don't get the information either. So uh, some short notice, some uh, yeah, to-do lists or something like that would be nice. There already are some floating, floating around in the net, but uh, the problem is, uh, yeah, not everyone gets them because they don't know where to find them. And yeah, it's so not the right media. Um, yeah, one of the big problems is uh, the lack of personal involvement uh, by most people. If you are not blind, normally you are not using a screen reader. So you do not know how these uh, tools work. Um, so uh, it is hard to understand for most people why they should use alternative text or why they should um, use uh, style sheets in Word to, um, yeah, to get uh, headings and so on. Uh, yeah, this is one of the 
problems. Um, accessibility, accessible documents uh, cannot be created automatically. Um, yeah, there is not just a button, please create an accessible document. Uh, in most cases, you have to get a basic knowledge on uh, a few things what you just need to know when creating documents. I talk about documents because uh, for today's presentation, um, I choose Microsoft Word as an example because it's uh, the tool that most of us use to produce texts and uh, and uh, uh, yeah, several documents. Uh, yeah. Tools make it easy to create non-accessible content. I will come to this later, but for example, in Word, you can choose your own colors. You can choose your own fonts as you like them. So if something looks quite fancy, quite nice, it may be some people will not be able to use the document because your phone is just a night handwritten phone, for example, then some people may not uh, yeah, get the content of your document. Uh, on the other hand, tools make it difficult to create accessible content. I will come to this uh, later as well. As we will see, it is not easy to achieve several goals with uh, the tools we, you, we every day use. So, um, and another big problem is in most organizations, there's no big plan to accessibility. Um, I began to study and to talk about accessibility maturity models in the in the last months because this is a quite interesting topics topics uh, topic for organizations um, because most organizations do not have a plan how to do deal with uh, as a accessibility on a organizational level so most uh, organizations do not have uh, plans how new employees uh, get in touch with accessibility. There are no training programs. Um, uh, there are no information materials uh, and such a, a mod, uh, such an implementation of, a, of such a model would uh, be a good way uh, to start dealing with uh, with accessibility in small or bigger organizations. But this is not um, the topic for today. But uh, yeah, it's it's an important thing. Okay, let's take a look at Microsoft Word, as I said in the introduction. Um, where are the problems with Microsoft Word? Um, in science, uh, if we if we produce scientific data, if you produce papers um, 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 or other uh, document types, uh, you have the problem. Uh, no, you don't have the problem, uh, but you just need to use tables and. The problem with Microsoft Word is you only can use simple tables. So that means a simple table uh, has columns and rows. And um, in Microsoft Word, you can only make column headlines. So if you have a table with four na first name and last name of persons and age, then um, you have the column headlines, first name, last name, and age. And in each row, you have the person's first name, last name, and age. And a screen reader would read this uh, in the way that it reads for, for for example, for my uh, uh, 
data, it would read first name Andreas, last name Yaitla, age something. Um, and uh, yeah, um, you need this relation of a cell to um, to the to the column um, heading. And in Word, it simply isn't possible to shift these 19 degrees around so that you have um, headings for the rows, where in some cases you, you, you need uh, this direction in the table. Um, yeah, this is one of the uh, biggest drawbacks of uh, Microsoft Word in the current state. Uh, and it gets even worse if you wanted to make more complicated tables. If you have sub tables, sub paths, it gets really, uh, you, you, you just can't do it with Word. You need to rely on other tools. If it comes to table, I tell everyone the best way to use, uh, to, to represent tables is using HTML because in HTML, the, um, the uh, language uh, websites are created in, uh, there are mechanisms uh, to, um, yeah, to, 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 to create uh, more complex tables. For each table cell, uh, you, get, you can get an, an individual ID and this ID you can relate to, to um, um, column headings or row headings and there you can, can combine them and make really uh, complex tables. And yeah, in HTML, this is possible. In Word, it is not possible. Um, in PDF, for example, it is possible to create these uh, uh, more complex tables, but yeah, you need the tools to do it. You need Acrobat, you need the knowledge to do it. And most people do not have this knowledge. So if we are talking about um, um, yeah, okay. Uh, if you are talking about uh, um, 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 ways to bring scientists to use tools, uh, then uh, we need to give them the tools how to do it. Uh, because, uh, yeah, it's 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 not. Uh, no one will uh, learn how to HTML to. Uh, to produce their files. And if there are no tools existing to uh, make these tasks, then uh, yeah, uh, tables will simply be not accessible by, for example, screen reader users. Uh, another problem with MS Word is there is no simple workflow to create accessible PDF forms. PDF forms are uh, one of the most asked feature um, people asked me to make training courses for. And I have to tell everyone there is no simple workflow. If you want to create a PDF form um, out of Microsoft Word, for example, uh, you have to, uh, yeah, you can, it, it's just you print it you rescan it and let Acrobat uh, identify the, the cells uh, of, of, of the, the form fields and so on. And this is a process that is, uh, yeah, is, is related to many errors. Uh, you need to know what you do and there is no, no quite automatic uh, procedure. It is in some, case is automatic, but you have to error check and uh, therefore you have to know how how uh, all this works. Um, for me as a computer scientist, it's uh, simply not understandable why huge companies like Microsoft are not able to implement a simple transformation of um, of, for example, a form field in Word to a form field in in um, PDF. 
uh, it, it's, it's just a simple transformation from one format to another. Um, and uh, why these huge companies that with their major, uh, uh, with the huge uh, yeah, resources are not able to implement something like this is, is, is not understandable for me. Uh, the public sector in each country uh, invests uh, extremely big amount of money uh, in, in, in these two office tools. And uh, I'm, I, I simply can't understand why they are not able to, to implement accessible uh, formats with these tools. So, um, yeah, uh, with Word, for example, uh, it is not possible to uh, be sure that the PDF you create from a Word file isn't corrupted. Even uh, I, as an accessibility expert, get frustrated or, um, yeah, it's, it's annoyed uh, when I create a document uh, and later on in Acrobat, I find out that things I did right in Word were created the wrong way. One of the examples is, um, if for some reason I have a table and I combine cells in the table. Uh, this works quite well if I combine two rows uh, um, in, in one column, two row cells. Then the exported PDF works quite fine in Acrobat. But if I'm doing it in the other direction, if I have two cells in the same row that span over more columns, then there will be an error in the PDF document. Um, the first time I realized this, uh, this effect, uh, I couldn't believe it that I had to, to Google around uh, and I found out this is a bug that uh, is known for, for years now and hasn't been fixed by Microsoft. So, um, yeah, things that you would expect that should work out of the box are simple. Uh, yeah, the, it's simply not the case that, that they work. Um, another thing is table of contents. If you, in, in Word, if you create a table of contents, export it to a PDF, and then uh, want to evaluate this PDF for a PDF UA, um, then you will see that um, the create table of contents has errors uh, or just doesn't meet the conformance of PDF UA because Microsoft just does not uh, do it uh, the way it should be. And this is one of the biggest problems for me at the moment. Um, there is no simple uh, way, uh, at least with, uh, with, with Word itself, to create um, PDF UA conformant uh, files. You need to buy additional software, for example, uh, uh, Access Word from Access 4 is one of these soft, uh, soft, these tools. Uh, but the tool itself costs more than the office site of Microsoft. So um, I have to buy expensive additional software to uh, do something that should already be done by the software. Uh, at least uh, about Austrian law, um, public services should not buy software that produces non-accessible content. So normally um, minis uh, ministries or, or universities uh, should not be allowed to buy Microsoft software because the software out of the box doesn't produce uh, accessible um, content. So yeah, this is another thing uh, we could talk about. 
Okay. Um, these are just some examples on how, uh, yeah, a correct use of a tool uh, results in non-accessible or not so good accessible documents. Uh, let's take a, a, another thing uh, with tools I identified is um, there's too much functionality in the tool. For example, in Word, you can um, choose the colors as you like it. Um, if you, for example, want to have your heading in a, in a light gray on a white uh, background, uh, the contrast between background and foreground is just uh, too small for some people to read it. Um, yeah, in Word, it's possible. Maybe it shouldn't be possible. Um, another thing is you can choose your phones as you like them. Yeah, you have the freedom to choose, as I already uh, uh, talked about. Um, but um, maybe in some cases, it shouldn't be possible to do so. Um, you can, but don't have to use a document structure. So in Word, for example, uh, if you want to make a heading, um, then um, not so uh, not a not so small amount of people just selects the text, selects uh, a bigger phone, selects a different phone, a different color, and then whoop, you have a heading. Um, visually, it's the heading for you, but uh, semantically, the screen reader will not uh, use it as a heading if you haven't uh, chosen a heading style for um, for for this, uh, and why do screen reader user uh, use uh, or need headings? Uh, because um, if you are, for example, one uh, reading, um, yeah, a, a book, and you wouldn't have headings uh, or something like that in it, just only the text, um, then. Uh, you could read the text, but it wouldn't be a pleasure. So, because you you, you just don't have uh, the structure, and the screen reader um, uses these hints on headings to jump from one heading to the next, for example. So you can um, jump over chapters or sub uh, sub chapters and so on. And so you need this uh, structure. In 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 Word, it's just easy, just use um, heading level one, heading level two to uh, uh, to structure your documents. Uh, but still, it's just possible to don't do it this way. You can, but you do not have um, to add text alternatives to non-text content. Uh, this is something I already talked about uh, as well. Um, if you have a picture, um, a screen reader, you, a blind person cannot see what's on the picture. And the screen reader will not read what's on the picture. Uh, with um, latest developments in artificial intelligence, uh, this gets better because um, Microsoft or Apple um, supports um, auto recognition of uh, images uh, nowadays, uh, but these recognitions work. Yeah, in in some cases they work quite well. In other cases they are not quite usable. Um, so, in newer versions of Word, for example, if you add an image, then Word will uh, create an alternative text for you, um, but it is on you to check if the text makes sense. For example, you could have a text of a cat uh, and the alternative text would say dog. But um, yeah, if, if, if no human checks this, then uh, uh, the, it may be uh, that the content uh, isn't uh, 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 isn't told right to a blind person. 
Okay, and these are just some examples on how uh, too much uh, functionality um, gets, uh, yeah, gets worse for for accessibility. So, what do we need to? Um, yeah, first, first, I, I will. I, after the slides, I will show you um, um, uh, some example in Word. Uh, so, what what uh, will uh, what what do we need to to come over these these things I told you about? Um, we need simple rules to uh, for content creators. Simple rules does mean no. Uh, really long guidelines with a tenth of uh, of checkpoints that we have to meet. Um, for example, at Klangfurt University, we defined for us, this is not standard compliant, but we, we, we for us defined uh, 10 points that in Microsoft Word, uh, everyone can uh, simply check to get let's say more accessible word documents so in our view if we are using these 10 points uh, this is 10 uh, uh, yeah tips then uh, the document will be quite good readable by at least screen reader users okay um Yeah, as, as, as I told about the uh, functionality in the last slide, um, we need to reduce the functionality of tools. Uh, in preparation for this talk today, I thought about what 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 could we uh, what could Microsoft, for example, do uh, to um, yeah to make the situation a bit better for authors. And I came to the conclusion, why can't Microsoft and other co uh, companies not just implement an accessibility um, mode for their documents? So um, in the current state, if you use a color contrast combination that is not readable, uh, that isn't quite good readable, um, then um, there is a way I will show you later. Um, in Word, how you can check this because Word has an accessibility checker built in that checks if the color combinations, for example, are um, are readable. And um, yeah, but you have to activate this, and uh, Word doesn't tell you so. This combination isn't good readable, so don't use it. Uh, uh, no, so it, it tells you don't use it, but uh, it should not allow you to use it. So if you activate an accessibility mode, for ex uh, then uh, such color combinations shouldn't be possible. Or if you are using a fancy font, uh, then uh, the system uh, just shouldn't show you the font at all. For would, would be a nice idea. Or if you are adding an image then um yeah then there must be an uh, alternative text to the image uh, otherwise the document will not be saved for example uh, but in my experience even these hints or in in some uh, uh, tools there are just wizards that uh, that show you if accessibility is met or not uh, in, in some cases, they they help to produce more um, accessible documents because people want to do their documents right. And if there are of, uh, some uh, some red alert signs, for example, then they will think about what they did wrong. For example, if you have um, your um, uh, text corrections, then uh, yeah, you get your red lines on the words. And if you see a red line, hmm, there's something wrong. I should do it uh, another way. Let's check it. And uh, this uh, uh, these hints must be 
more uh, visually uh, or at least in an accessibility mode, such uh, combinations shouldn't be possible. So, um, yeah, uh, this is uh, uh, another thing I, 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 I uh, already told tools should uh, um, point out accessibility issues. Uh, this is what I just talked about. Um, document uh, Documents created by tools must be standard compliant. Uh, there is no reason why Microsoft uh, can't implement um, an export function to PDF UA on board on, uh, on the tools. Uh, it's just they don't want to for what reason ever, because it's a format not uh, created by Microsoft, possibly, maybe. Uh, but uh, if they are selling their tools to public services, then I think they uh, we can expect that uh, uh, files exported from this format uh, should be standard compliant. Or much better, uh, tools should only generate uh, accessible content, but uh, this is a dream. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that comes to be true in uh, some time. Okay, this is my input from the slides. I just want to show you um, in Microsoft Word how you could use the accessibility um, wizard or how you can call it or the accessibility checking function. So I will go back to my Zoom. Zoom, where are you? Okay. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where is my Zoom window? Please let me. So, cancel. No, I don't want to leave the meeting. I just want. I just want to find. Where and my screen sharing option is. When you have the screens, <laughs> worry about that. And um, yeah, it's very useful. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, so. Oh, oh sorry, it, it's my second screen. It's, it's the second uh -huh. screen, you are right. Yes. So, uh, yeah, so I uh, will. This is a problem when you are visually impaired, then you often don't get what's happening around you. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, that's so. what I was asking about Zoom, because you would imagine that they would also have a little bit better built accessibility tools. Yes. So, oh no, this is uh, wrong. This was my it's one slide. Note. So, where is my ah, there is word. so okay just found it and so okay there it is okay um this is a simple document where i had a um document um um, um heading and an image not quite much more I just activated uh, the accessibility uh, browser here. You may find it in, if you go to um, yeah, uh, review and activate check accessibility, then you will get this, uh, this dialogue. In my case, um, I just added uh, the image. This is a nice image that tells us that um, you uh, cannot go down uh, the stairs by um, wheelchair or with your with your baby uh, um, wagon. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just added it. And as I told you, um, 
word just adds an alternative text and the accessibility feature just tells me a review auto-generated description. So it's just picture one. So I, I, I use the picture one. And um, if you want to check the um, alternative text for, for a picture, um, then you, oh, sorry. Okay. Size and position of view. Okay, I had to search it because normally I work in German and uh, the, uh, in, in English I didn't know where the where the menu items were. So um, in this case, I pointed at the image uh, and just select view alternative text, and then there I get the uh, description: a picture containing outdoor signs, sign, cartoon. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 somehow what uh, there is on the picture, but uh, in in relation to the text, I I I normally had some reason why I chose this picture, and then um, I would uh, describe it in more detail. So um, yeah, it's good that I checked it. So I just can. Uh, delete the text and replace it with a better one. Uh, yeah, this is for the images. Um, in general, um, there are no rules to define alternative text for images. It really depends on what information uh, is important for the text. Um, I tell uh, my students uh, to, uh, if they want to decide what uh, the description uh, should be, then they should just close their eyes and imagine when they um, delete the image, what uh, information for the text will get lost. So um, in most cases, you then get the idea what you should write uh, to the alternative text. Um, or in some cases, uh, you don't need the alternative text if the information is already in the main text. Uh, so the picture is just um, yeah, a visual representation of what's already in the text. So there are different ways uh, how, to, uh, how to use images. But this is our uh, stuff for another lecture. Ah, this uh, about the images and the second one here, if I choose a, another color combination. So uh, pl please don't be irritated. I use the dark mode in, in Word because it's better for my eyes. Um, so if I use a light gray, for example, for the text, so then in this case, you already see it's, it's, it's much worse uh, to read. And if I go to the accessibility panel, back to the accessibility panel. So let's go to review again, check accessibility. And then there is another um, warning um, on hard to read text contrast. So that tells me that in this case, if I select it, then it's, it gets selected here in the text too. And yeah, it, uh, I get some uh, information what I should do to correct this error. In this case, just use another color combination. Yeah, these are just two examples on how Word can assist you uh, to make uh, more accessible documents. Um, another thing that you see on my uh, uh, Word settings here is that I activated these uh, these symbols, for example, for uh, for paragraphs and so on. This 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 blue symbols. Um, um, they show me how much spare paragraphs I, I added to the text, for example, because in some settings, screen reader will uh, read you uh, spare lines. So 
it may be quite annoying if you uh, if if you read the text and space and you hear space 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 when you uh, are going uh, through um, the document. Uh, there are other ways to make room if you want to uh, have it. Um, but uh, just hitting the enter uh, key isn't, uh, in, in most cases, isn't the, the best way to do it. Okay. Um, yeah, this is it for now for me. Uh, no, some feature I wanted to, to, to additionally show you if you go to, um, to view and activate the navigation pane. This is something... Um, many people already i also don't know um they are in the first pane you get uh, a, a a minimalistic view of your current page and the second one is the content so if i change the title uh, the, this text was a title so if i change it to heading one you see in the navigation pane my heading one is uh, is shown. So if I make a, a sub graph uh, and I edit it to heading two, then you see I have a tree. I have my heading one and heading two paragraph uh, uh, headlines. And if I um, if I click on them, uh, it just jumps so it's it's some kind of bookmark um this setting also helps you to check if your document is well structured so okay now we talked about word in uh, the first place about tools how they can uh, make it harder to produce uh accessible content but also how they can help you uh, in in yeah producing accessible content thank you for um yeah for listening and yeah i hope you have some nice questions and i'm, I'm thrilled to ask uh, to answer them thank, thank you. you so much andreas that was very useful i was wondering about uh open office or LibreOffice. office are they doing a better job on accessibility? Should we recommend them instead of uh, Microsoft tools? In in some cases, um, uh, uh, it it allows to export in PDF UA, um, but it's not, for example, it's not usable uh, uh, for for exporting um, PDF forms. Uh, it it does a better job than uh, than um, Word in this case, but it still isn't what you would expect. So um, it's 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 not it's no better choice in this case. Thank you. And um, I have a question to you and maybe Suzanne as well. And uh, I'm dropping once again a link in the chat there to guidelines on preparing accessible content for repositories that Suzanne and her colleagues produced. And I was wondering um, whether you as uh, repository managers check documents for accessibility when they are deposited. Is it part of the repository curation workflow or not really? So maybe, maybe a question to Suzanne. Um, it would be nice, we could do so, but uh, for us it's not possible because we are so huge, huge um, university and we have so many um, different um, objects in our repository, so we can't do it, but it would be fine. I agree with you. Yeah, the, the problem with automatic checks is uh, that in, in the case of accessibility, you cannot check everything uh, automatically. Uh, for example, as I showed uh, the image uh, uh, thing, um, 
you can check if there is an alternate uh, alternative text for an image, but you cannot change. Uh, uh, you cannot check if it really makes sense. Uh, maybe in some years when uh, artificial intelligence is, uh, yeah, does a quite better job, then maybe it will be possible. Uh, but uh, uh, in today's state, uh, it just isn't isn't possible. And there are other um, um, yeah, fields like uh, easy understanding. And so uh, there are already algorithms that uh, check how, yeah, how easy a text is. But uh, in the end, these algorithms uh, yeah, rely on, 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 on yeah, uh, for, for example, for people with uh, learning disabilities, it may, even be not possible to uh, to read uh, or, or understand the text uh, in the way that it, it should be. Thank you. What I wanted to say is automatic tools are nice for some tasks, uh, but uh, are uh, not the way uh, accessibility experts would uh, would tell you how to check accessibility. Thank you. Any other questions to Andreas and Susanna? And Andre, you shared the link in the chat. Do you maybe want to tell more about your work? Because and Andrea shared the link to guidelines they produce as part of uh, okay. uh, open yes. project. Hello. 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 Um, I mean, it's more about uh, digitization when you do the um, scanning of the books, for example, and we produce some guidelines to uh, what to um, pay attention to during the scanning and after um, like doing alternate type formats for uh, post-processing when you try to adapt uh, for the uh, people with special needs. And we also paid attention to different kinds of formats, not only uh, Word files, but also EPUB and HTML and so on. So um, if you take a look, maybe it's something that would be interesting to others. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. I will, I will surely take a look. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, that was very useful and very practical session. And uh, thanks a lot for sharing your experiences. Uh, so I hope we'll continue this conversation and uh, we'll share slides and recording. And uh, yeah, maybe maybe we'll have another session looking at other tools. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, there are a lot of. Thank you messages in the chat saying that it's uh... Uh, thank you for your interest. Uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you want to uh, to 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 talk about the subjects, just just contact me. I'm in-house need every day. <laughs> so please don't hesitate to ask. There is one more question. What automatic tools would you recommend, Andreas? even if they are not 100% accurate. In repositories with intensive submission rates, it would be very time consuming uh, to check manually. Then very good session. Oh, um, 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 yeah, th this is not uh, such an easy, um, it depends on what you want to check. Uh, if, if you want to check our web, uh, just web pages, uh, for repository uh, for repositories, I don't know if there are even some 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 automatic tools to check accessibility available. Um, yeah, it's it's not that easy to to uh, to uh, yeah to tell. Um, but if you want, I can uh, take a look around and and and, and send you some some sources I found, but mm -hmm. uh, 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 
as you saw, I'm not a huge fan of, of automatic accessibility tools, so I don't use them. And um, therefore, uh, yeah, I, I haven't uh, the big overview on, accessib uh, on on automatic tools at the time. Thank you. Still reading the chat. Yeah, yeah good point. Uh, so Andre is saying check what to EPUB to by Daisy Consortium makes great EPUBs out of well prepared word files. Yeah, um, Isabel is saying it would be great if you could check some tools, uh, Andreas, and share them or connect you. And then Isabel is also saying maybe this is a topic for repository softwares. To explore more, yeah, absolutely. Maybe uh, I, I just I just found uh, uh, an interesting uh, about uh, Word to EPUB tools from the Daisy Consortium. This one uh, just uh, yeah works quite well, but you have uh, even in this case you have to uh, keep in mind that your original document has to be uh, in 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 in. Uh, yeah, in, in, in some some condition that it may be translated to the other forms, um, for example, EPUB. Um, another thing I see in the in the chat is uh, the, the X uh, exit monitor Excel monitor was used. Yeah, the the Excel tools are quite uh, uh, broadly used. Uh, because they are command line tools and uh, um, or you can use them on, on servers quite well. As a, if you want to start with something, then they would be, uh, an, 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 this would be a nice starting point. Thank you so much, okay. everyone. And so. I don't see any other questions. So thank you, thank you once again. and. Uh, have a good day. Um, see you, you at the next Thank open air coffee breaks. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. I think we should bye keep bye. in touch in this topic on open air. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.